So the beginning of my day, so I'm up usually at four, four thirty in the morning. I don't let anybody on my schedule until nine a.m., nine thirty if I can push it. Yeah. And then I don't let anybody on my schedule after one p.m. I like that. So there's a narrow window where I've already gotten four to five hours worth of work in the beginning. So I'm mm -hmm. doing my most important shit, all execution. Mm -hmm. Then I take meetings. I make sure everybody's moving, and they have whatever questions they need answered. And then I'm fucking in it. I'm in product and I'm in marketing. Those are the two things I'm just like obsessively focused mm -hmm. about. And so I'm available. I'm with the team, which by the way, I'm going to guess because of how many businesses you own, you don't operate like this. During COVID, I was like, word, go wherever you want. You can move away. No big deal. Now I'm like, motherfucker, you better get in the office. Like we are back in a big way. It is so inefficient it's to so not beneficial. have people here. Yeah. Bro. Well, we, we just bought an office in Austin for the same reason. I've especially found you know, I have an incredible team because they'll tell me, they'll be really honest about it. Like one of the guys on my team who runs part of the creative thing, he's like, yeah, I'm just, I just don't work as hard when I'm not in the office. I'm yeah, like, I can't no believe you just said that to my face, yeah. but also thank you. Right. And, uh, and, and I think it's true because most, all of us have willpower issues and all of us can benefit from a little eye over the shoulder. And the reason why I think we can really benefit is because I remember when I was at Goldman Sachs and they were watching us like crazy, I was never on social media. I was never dicking off because I wanted to get out of that office. I knew I was going to have to do long hours and I wanted to get out of there when mm. I was done. I never understood the Silicon Valley foosball, make them stay here all the time Bro. thing. I'm like, come here, give it intense, maybe do a workout break or a walk in between, come back to intense and then go live your life. You know, and if you're like me, you're going to work way more than that. But like, be here when you're going to be here. Like, right. think about work like meditation. You should be so singularly focused that all distraction sort of fades away. And if you do that, then you actually have to you have to work less because you're so much more effective. But I remember early on in my career, you know, it's why I couldn't stay at Vanguard, actually, because I was sitting at a desk and I was trying, I was like, you know, those ducks where underneath the surface they're paddling like crazy, mm. but on top they're smooth. That was me. I was drowning. I didn't know anything about finance. I'd come from journalism. I, everybody was smarter than me. Everybody went to Harvard and Stanford, et cetera. I went to Arizona State, Harvard of the West, as you said. Um, and, uh, and I remember one of the, my teammates came up and was trying to talk to me about lunch planning and stuff. And I was like, Cece, I, I'm focused. I don't have time to talk about any of this. I'm I'm here, man. We could talk like after work, but like I'm here right now. And that happened like a few times. And I wasn't be trying to be a jerk. I just couldn't be distracted because then I lost my focus entirely. And I probably have a little ADHD. And so it would derail me for like 30, 40 minutes. And I remember that happened. And then my boss at one point was like, your team thinks that you would leave dead bodies behind you. And I was like, huh. Really? Why? And they're like, well, you don't pay attention when they come up to your desk. You don't do party planning. I was like, guy, I am here to do a job mm -hmm. and I am going to, I would never like run over somebody to do the job, but I will be singularly focused to get it done. And so that is, I think, have what it takes. Have you backed off that or are you, because now as a CEO, I have to imagine yeah. you got to make people feel a little more warm and fuzzy oh. or have you found a way to be like, yo. I have good people who are more warm and fuzzy than I am. So I found in life, like you are who you are, kind of. And every time I try to become somebody that I'm not, first of all, it comes off as inauthentic. And second of all, it doesn't really work. So if I come in and I'm too warm and fuzzy, nobody's gonna buy it. Um, I am fun, I think. Like I'm aggressive, but I'm fun. So I'll, I'll make jokes and I do something every Monday called the, the compass. And basically it's just a little PowerPoint 10 minutes that I give to the whole team. And in it are a few things like our culture code. Every single week I go through what the 13 values are. I pick like one, one person who wins like something for one of our values. Um, and in that there'll be some funky fun stuff for each of them. And so I will like, I will cheerlead the shit out of the company during that period. Um, but when somebody needs a hug, they know not to come to me about it for sure. Um, now, I think the counterpoint to that is I've always taken care of my people. Like, as long as you are good to your teammates and to the company, like, I will have your back. Like, if you need a new job and this isn't the place for you, I will help you find a new job. I won't fire you. Like, I will handhold you. Um, you know, if you have a health issue, I'm going to take care of you. But, like, I don't think you have to be warm and fuzzy. I also hire, like, a lot of, we're, we're really honest about we, who we are in interviews, which I think is really, really, and if, if you... You know, I was a terrible employee at Vanguard because they're super touchy-feely, 
you know, kind of socialists. And I liked Goldman. I liked capitalist kind of jerks, but they were really smart. And uh, so I liked that. I wanted the pressure. And so now when people come and interview with us, I'm like, hey, like, talk to me about like your favorite moment of pressure. Talk to me about when you did the thing that felt unreasonable to get the goal. And I tell them up front, our interviews start with all the things that are terrible about the company and why I'm awful to work for. <laughs> and if they still like it after that, then they might be a win. But otherwise, at least they know, you know. We have a very similar thing. So it's our yeah. culture doc. You can't come into interview unless you've read it. Oh, I and like that. Yeah, oh yeah. And the funny thing is uh, I've had multiple people say, hey, we've lost a lot of candidates when they read the culture doc. 